Thank you, Kevin. Our next speaker, Deep Dinishan Dinison, is the Director of AI, Robotics and Quantum Computing at NetApp, a company probably most familiar to us all as a, as a vendor of storage technologies. I promised there wouldn't be any deep dives into the technology in this track, but in fact, that was a lie. And this is precisely what this is going to be, as uh, Dipth is going to explain, speaking as a member of NetApp's strategic leadership on AI, how their data fabric technology addresses the data management and uh, federated learning challenges you will face when you deploy artificial intelligence, and how the future technologies will uh, help us overcome them. Hello and welcome to the AI Summit Hong Kong. My name is Deep Nation. I'm the Director of Artificial Intelligence, Robotics and Quantum Computing for NetApp. I'm based out of Melbourne in Australia and I have customers all across the Asia Pacific region. So today I'm going to talk about future-proofing your AI investments for a quantum classical hybrid cloud world. Okay, that's uh, a bit of mouthful, let's get started. So what do we see? Oh, I'm going to talk about what I see our customers deploying AI for. And uh, as you know, many of you know, artificial intelligence systems use a large amounts of data and they use this data to train a system. And the system learns by, by uh, consuming a large amounts of data and there are statistical functions that you would use to evaluate how the, evaluate the performance of the system that is learning. A branch of machine learning called deep learning has had a tremendous amount of success in the last few years, uh, particularly because uh, computer vision problems can benefit from using deep learning. And where deep learning has had its success is in medical imaging, uh, again, a computer vision problem, and also in uh, systems like the perception for automotive systems. And part of the reason why deep learning has been so successful is that it can look into the data and it can learn the features from the data and not just the model, but it can uh, learn the representations from the data. And that is at, at the, this is at the algorithmic level, uh, but in, in, uh, in reality, when you want to deploy uh, these systems, you would need uh, infrastructure. You need large scale infrastructure. You need large scale infrastructure to train the system and you need large scale infrastructure to deploy the system. So uh, we see that uh, customers typically uh, have an on-premise system like an AI pod, uh, which they deploy in the core infrastructure, which is uh, in the data centers. And once the system is trained, then they extract the model and then they deploy the model in the edge or on the cloud. Uh, we call the inference systems. And this is not a one type step. Uh, once they are deployed, they collect, uh, the inference systems collects a large amounts of data and that data has to be fed back into the trains, a training system to further improve the performance of the model. What NetApp has done in this area is that we have built what is called as a data fabric, which means that all our appliances, uh, either storage, uh, hardware based or software based, uh, they are all well connected and it's easy for you to seamlessly transfer the data between your edge, between your core and the cloud system. So a lot of customers that we see around APAC, uh, they use uh, deep learning systems and they make use of massive infrastructure spread across edge core in the cloud. We also see uh, recently uh, with the emergence of uh, quantum computers that some of the customers are trialing quantum machine learning. Uh, as you all know, uh, quantum computers are very different from your digital systems uh, in the sense that they represent information in, in qubits, which are fundamentally different from the way that you represent information in classical systems that is your typical digital computer in terms of bits. And because NetApp has got a data fabric and you can seamlessly move the data between the edge core and the cloud. And as, as we see the emergence of uh, quantum computers from all the public cloud companies, it would be feasible for, uh, for data scientists to use those quantum computing instances and train the system uh, from the data that is available in the data fabric. 
Uh, and also there's a challenge here that uh, the quantum computers uh, don't use digital data. So we, uh, with, we use partners who are able to convert the digital data and encode them into quantum circuits such that you could do quantum machine learning using quantum computer instances. So NetApp provides the basic infrastructure, the AI infrastructure, such that you could develop your AI algorithms uh, spanning across your edge core in the cloud. And these algorithms may not necessarily limited to classical algorithms. They could also be quantum algorithms making use of quantum computing instances. Let me also give a little bit background about the kind of uh, a software that we provide. So let's take, for example, cloud. You can access all of our cloud products from cloud.netapp.com. We have tools that uh, analyze your footprint in the cloud and, and using machine learning and can suggest you uh, how to optimize your infrastructure in the cloud. And we have placed our storage software in the cloud. Uh, they call Azure NetApp files in Azure and cloud volume servers and cloud volumes on tap on the on Google and AWS infrastructures. And these are your enterprise grade storage software deployed on the public cloud. And they are faster and cheaper than the native cloud storage system themselves. And most importantly, there are tools like Cloud Sync which enables you to sync your data uh, between your on-premise system and your cloud system. So uh, once you have your data in our data fabric, then it's possible for you to utilize any of the compute instances in the public cloud to do the kind of workload that you would want to do. We also have provide other services such as uh, cloud campaigns. Uh, uh, cloud campaigns is a tool which uh, uses AI uh, internally and wants to, when if you are moving data from your uh, on-premise data center to a public cloud, it can automatically figure whether there is a personally identified uh, uh, information in the data. So this gives you the guarantee for you know, GDPR regulations and so on. And on the on-premise, which is where we see a lot of customers deploying AI, uh, we have in partnership with compute companies like NVIDIA, Fujitsu, and Lenovo, we have AI pods. So here, what you see is uh, our most successful product. It's called ONTAP AI. So uh, it comes with uh, NVIDIA GPU systems and uh, NetApp's uh, storage platforms. And these storage platforms are also cloud connected. And so the data that you put uh, in our AFF systems here is also available, uh, will be also be available on the cloud. And these AI pods are quite easy to provision. So you could, for instance, have these infrastructure in the morning and the data scientists would be able to use the Jupyter by afternoon. So we have automated most of the provisioning, both at the infrastructure layer, as well as at the application layer by integrating them with Kubernetes and Kubeflow, as well as integrating them with you know, uh, container persistent systems like Trident systems. You could also use uh, systems uh, for high performance computing systems. So here is a SuperPod, which is a six rack system and you could deploy about 32 node NVIDIA DGX A100 and connected using infinite band and our storage appliances. And what else do we see? So we see a large number of customers having their data in the cloud, and we see a large number of customers having their training system in their data centers. And also the, the nature of the workload is also changing. And earlier we would see customers using uh, your AI system for doing a large amount of analytics. And today it's more uh, about doing training of deep learning models. And tomorrow we expect that it will be more about inference. And recently, NVIDIA has announced a new GPU system called an Ampere-based system. And here, a single GPU is like seven GPUs. They call it as multi-instance GPUs. Each instance in this GPU is equivalent in computational power uh, to that of Tesla V100, which was the generation of GPUs before. So they are really, really powerful. And so, uh, by using that system, the multi-instance uh, GPU systems, it is quite easy for you to go from one workload to, to another. So that's a little bit more, uh, that's a bit about the AI infrastructure systems. Now, 
Let me go and talk about some of the case studies that our customers uh, have deployed AI systems for. The first and the foremost is uh, AI applications in healthcare. Uh, I mentioned before, one of the key reasons why deep learning has been quite popular is because uh, it's well suited for computer vision problems. And because it is well suited for computer vision problems, a lot of problems in healthcare, such as medical imaging, pathology, radiology, and so on, can benefit from deep learning systems. Uh, so here is a case study from King's College uh, London. Uh, uh, they are uh, one of the uh, UK's uh, national, they, they have built an AI platform to allow specialists in the UK's national health services to automate radiology integration. And so they use our systems uh, for um, uh, deep, uh, deep learning applications in radiology and pathology. On the use case is that of the Hanover Medical School. And they also use uh, deep learning systems uh, for um, uh, diagnostic imaging, uh, and particularly they are doing a research on uh, detecting chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases uh, using, uh, using AI and specifically using deep learning. So, and we also see a large number of customers uh, here in Hong Kong, for instance, uh, a medtech company called Nisi has been uh, recently purchased on type AI and they've been using that to see whether they can improve um, robotic assisted uh, surgery. Uh, earlier, uh, the success of deep learning was in medical imaging, and now we can see that it's also used uh, for uh, understanding surgical workflows, also to, um, uh, to make uh, robotic assistive surgery easier. To, easier. Uh, we also see um, AI in, uh, used for uh, processing electronic healthcare records. That's uh, AI in healthcare. Uh, in addition to that, we see AI used across uh, many industries and, and there are system integrators who build the AI infrastructures and then they offer it as a service for external customers. Either they build a solution for the external customers or they expose their infrastructures so that a data scientists within other organizations can, can use the system. So here is a case study uh, from Itochu uh, Techno Solutions based out of Tokyo as a systems integrator, and they use ONTAP AI systems to serve their end customers. Uh, one of the top notch uh, consulting company in, in London, AI consulting company is Cambridge Consultants, and they use our ONTAP AI systems uh, to build AI specific solutions across the industries. So they have customers in automotive systems, they have customers in semiconductor, the consumer industry, and many other industries. Uh, here in, uh, uh, in Australia, the, we have a customer called Consultant Cloud, they have deployed NetApp's uh, ONTAP AI, and then they offer it as a service for their external customers. And if you, took, uh, to, if you look today, um, many of the customers have in-house uh, in data centers offering uh, uh, AI as a service for their internal customers. And, and then there are public cloud companies like uh, Google AWS, uh, who have commercial off-the-shelf uh, AI software available on the cloud. But between on-premise on systems and the public cloud systems, what is lacking in the market is vertical AI services. And so companies like Consultant Cloud, uh, what they try to do is to offer AI as a service for uh, vertical industries. So they are trying to see whether they can offer, say, video recognition as a service or in-store analytics for retail companies as a service. And this is a, an emerging market. And we expect that a lot of service provider will be following this uh, business model. We also see a large number of customers using AI uh, in their high performance computing systems. So for example, Simula is a Norwegian research laboratory and they use our storage appliances uh, for doing high performance computing research. Uh, the Simula is interesting in the sense that they uh, not only use uh, NVIDIA GPUs, they also use uh, other computing systems like from GraphCore. And they, what they have done is uh, using our partners uh, who have a file system called BGFS, 
they have deployed the system such that they can have the data on BGFS on NetApp storage appliances, but they can serve this data to multiple different types of compute instances like GPUs from NVIDIA and IPUs from GraphCore. The largest supercomputer in Australia is called the Guardi Supercomputer, and they use uh, NetApp's storage uh, platforms. And this has been built uh, in partnership with Fujitsu, where Fujitsu provides the compute nodes uh, containing the GPUs, and NetApp provides the backend storage appliances. And uh, the, since it's the largest high-performance computing system in the southern hemisphere, it's also used for a wide variety of uh, use cases uh, in, in simulation of quantum computing systems, in astrophysics, uh, biology, population health, and so on. So that's, I think, in a few of the case studies that we have where customers have deployed NetApp's AI pods uh, for AI in medical imaging, uh, for as system integrators providing uh, AI as a service to external customers and in high performance computing systems. So let me go back and try to answer the question that I had put, uh, which is the topic of the presentation, which is, how do you future-proof your AI investments in a quantum classical hybrid cloud world? Okay, so this is the world that we know, and uh, there are hyperscalers, public cloud companies. They are building uh, a large number of data centers all across the world, and NetApp can help you build your own private cloud. And in addition, uh, NetApp has deployed uh, the storage software on all the public cloud companies. And so it's called as uh, ANF on Azure, it's called Cloud Volume Service and Cloud Volumes on Tap on AWS and Google. So this is a platform where you could uh, land your data on the, on the public cloud company's uh, software. However, it provides the enterprise grade features that NetApp offers on the on-premise. In addition, we provide the tools by which it is easier for you to synchronize your data between your on-premise system and the public cloud systems. So for instance, if you want to run an analytics application on AWS, which uses S3, then you could sync your on-premise system to the S3 object in, in AWS using tools like Cloud Sync. We also provide the tools by which you can optimize your infrastructure on the cloud. And so it gives a uh, lot of uh, insights into the way that you're consuming your compute uh, in the cloud. And uh, so you could use uh, products like uh, Cloud Analyzer. So these are essentially tools that helps you to land your data, to move your data, to optimize your infrastructure, both on on-premise system and your, on your cloud system. Where does AI come in? So, uh, one of, I think, one of the uh, key areas where I think AI will really shine is where you can bring uh, consumers and producers in a, in a, fun, in a new marketplaces. Uh, take, for example, Uber. What does Uber do? Uh, Uber serves you predictions, and this, those predictions are quite accurate. And their business model is built on top of that. Uh, their business models allows new consumers and new producers to come together using prediction. It's very similar to the... Um, the business model that uh, Airbnb has adopted, however, for a completely different domain, and also, you know, uh, financial services companies like Ant Financial. What what did they do? They also brought consumers and producers uh, together in a in a new marketplace. So they offered credit uh, to consumers who didn't have a bank account, and they are like now one of the most successful companies uh, in China. In, in fintech and also the one of the most valued companies and they use a lot of AI uh, to bring consumers and producers together. But in order to bring those consumers and producers together through predictions, you would need to have an infrastructure with scales, uh, both uh, computationally scalable as well as uh, providing a data platform with scales. Okay, and so Enada provides those infrastructure. So we have in partnership with NVIDIA, a platform called ONTAP AI, uh, using NVIDIA's computer systems and networks and NetApp's uh, uh, storage appliances. And these storage appliances are connected to the cloud. So it's quite easy. We are not locking your data and it's quite easy to use those data 
and say uh, use an application on any of those cloud companies. Uh, you could use the compute instances that are available on AWS, GCP, or Azure and connect to uh, the uh, NetApp storage software on the public cloud companies. And also it's easier to move those data between your uh, on-premise system and to the public cloud company. So whenever there is an a new technology that is available, uh, for example, take uh, quantum computing as an example, it's likely to be available on the public cloud companies first. Uh, and, you know, it, it uses a dilution refrigerators. And so it's, it's kind of not, it's not so easy to deploy in your typical data centers. So as and when there are new um, um, uh, innovations that happen and they are available on the public cloud companies, you will be able to make use of them if the data is on NetApp's data fabric. Uh, in this particular case for quantum computing though, the, uh, the quantum machine learning applications, for instance, they, they can't consume digital data. So they would need a means by which uh, digital data can be encoded into the quantum circuits. So these are the uh, areas where we partner, you know, with uh, companies who have the expertise to build quantum machine learning uh, algorithms. And they have the expertise to convert your digital data into a format that the quantum compute can, can understand. So in order to provide, uh, if you want to uh, future-proof your infrastructure, and you want to um, invest in a data fabric that, span, that spans edge core in the cloud. And if you do have a data fabric, which does span edge core in the cloud, then you can make use of any of the new developments that are happening and are available on the public cloud or on the edge. Another uh, innovation that is happening, say on the edge side is that with the advent of 5G, the cloud is kind of moving to edge and it's called it's multi-access edge computing. And what that means is that the backend is may not for many applications may not go to the cloud. It may go to the edge cloud. And the, why the edge cloud? Because it provides with the, with the use of 5G, the latency is so small that you don't have to necessarily go to the cloud. And because the latency is so small in accessing MEC systems, it opens up new kind of applications uh, such that people can collaborate and um, using the edge cloud. And also you could computationally offload uh, the computational burden from say the robotic systems or things to back into the edge cloud. So as there are more and more uh, development, there are more and more innovation happening. Those innovations can make use of the, uh, the data that is available in the data fabric. And so if you do that, uh, then uh, irrespective of what industries that you are, so if you are in financial industry, you could uh, develop a financial fabric. So you could make use of any new technology that, that happens uh, and you would be able to make use of the data to, uh, to accelerate that technology adoption. If you are into trading and logistics, you might be able to build a trading and logistics fabric for your company. If you are into um, healthcare, you probably would be able to use a healthcare fabric for your company. So to summarize, in a world, uh, what we see AI deployments, most of the AI deployments that we see are on on-premise. Some of them are on the cloud. So you need to consider your hybrid cloud to deploy your AI system. We also see that some of the customers are not just using classical, that is digital computers, uh, uh, for doing AI, they are also experimenting with uh, quantum machine learning products, which makes use of quantum computers and those that are available only in the public cloud. And there has to be also a means to encode the digital information into quantum circuits such that you could uh, deploy and run them on the, on, on the quantum computers. So having a data fabric that spans across edge, the core and the cloud enables you to serve the data to the kind of compute instances that you want to run your AI applications on. Okay, all right. Thanks all of you for uh, listening to my presentation. I hope you had uh, got an insight into how some of our customers are using AI for, and uh, please feel to reach out to any of us uh, if you have any, any further questions. And enjoy the rest of your uh, uh, AI Summit. Thank you.